The icosahedron is one of the five platonic solids, along with the tetrahedron, the cube, the octahedron, and the dodecahedron. Icos means 20, and hedron means face. So the icosahedron has 20 triangular faces. In the regular icosahedron, each of the 20 faces is an equilateral triangle. There are actually two icosahedral point groups, I and IH. The group I, what we call a pure rotational group, has 60 symmetry operations. Just the identity and several types of proper rotations. If we add inversion to this, we also get mirror planes and improper rotations to get the full group IH. IH has 120 symmetry operations. Recall that even the highly symmetric octahedral group OH has just 48 symmetry operations. Many viruses have an icosahedral structure of the group I built out of proteins. These include such familiar viruses as the hepatitis B virus and the human papillomavirus. Now, not many simple molecules are shaped like an icosahedron. There is a related shape which belongs to the point group IH, the truncated icosahedron. Truncated means shortened, as if you chopped off several of the vertices with a scalpel for the pre-med students or with a hacksaw, also for some of the pre-med students. The most famous example of a truncated icosahedron in all of science is the molecule C60, Buckminster Fullerene, or the buckyball for short. It is a new allotropic form of carbon joining graphite and diamond. C60 consists of 60 identical carbon atoms arranged in a closed structure that is remarkably like what we Americans call a soccer ball and everyone else in the world calls a football. The carbon atoms form 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons. Here we can see one of the hexagons and there's below we can see a five-sided pentagon. We can recognize the hexagonal pattern as being suggestive of the structure of graphite, one of the allotropic forms of carbon that has been known for a very long time. Pentagons are necessary to get the structure to close up on itself. Now, while all the carbon atoms are equivalent, there are two types of carbon-carbon bonds in C60. Now, the carbon-carbon bond between two hexagons, so we can see an example right here. Here's one hexagon. Here is another hexagon. So this is the carbon-carbon bond to which we're referring right now. That is approximately a double bond. And then the carbon-carbon bond between a hexagon and a pentagon, so here we have a hexagon, here we have the pentagon, so this is the bond to which we are referring right now, is approximately a single bond. The highest order proper rotational axis for C60 is a C5, which is shown right here. This makes sense since there are 12 pentagons in the structure. Uh, if we look carefully at the very bottom of the molecule, we can see that the pentagon at the bottom, we, we can look through the, the model, um, is reversed relative to the pentagon at the top. This tells us a couple things that are very important. The first thing it tells us that there is no mirror plane that is perpendicular to this C5 axis. Because if there were a mirror plane, the pentagon at the top would be exactly mirrored by the pentagon at the bottom and it doesn't do that. 
So let's first to see the five-fold rotational axis here, which we can sort of see. The second thing that this tells us is that there is an S10 axis also. There is an improper rotation. Now the arrangement of the top and bottom pentagons of the structure is exactly the same as in the staggered conformation of ferrocene, which belongs to the point group D5D, and it features an S10 improper rotational axis. As a matter of fact, we're going to find out that D5D is actually one of the many subgroups of IH. So let's kind of see the five-fold rotational axis here. We take it, we start here, and then we rotate by a fifth of a turn. We see that it looks exactly like it did before, and we could rotate by another, another fifth, and it looks the same. By the same token, if we go in the opposite direction, you have C5 minus 1. We see that that is also a symmetry operation of the group because the molecule looks the same as it did before. Now yeah, I'm trying to hold the model steady so that we can more easily see the fivefold uh, rotational axis without having the stick in there where the axis is. So if you could look through the molecule more carefully, you can actually see the fivefold symmetry looking at this particular angle. The proper rotational axis of the next highest order for C60 is a C3. Now this might be somewhat surprising since we might jump to the conclusion that there is a C6 axis since we have so many hexagons in the structure. Recall that benzene, which is shaped like a regular hexagon, has a C6 axis. We also might notice, though, that attached to any given hexagon, there are three other hexagons, one, two, three, but also three pentagons, one, two, and three. And if we were to rotate by a C6, we would take an hexagon into a pentagon. And since hexagons and pentagons are not the same, this means that C6 is not a symmetry operation of the group of the C60. Now, a C3 axis, a C3 rotation, will take this hexagon into that hexagon, this hexagon into that hexagon, so that works. Also, a C3 would take this pentagon into this pentagon, this pentagon into that pentagon. So we'll see that we can see Looking down this axis, we look really carefully, we can kind of eventually see the C3 symmetry in that we have the three hexagons and the three pentagons. And we can verify it by doing a C3 rotation. We notice that we have a hexagon, which is, these are opened up to make the, uh, the molecule easier to see. I've cut out the centers of almost all of the hexagons. So if we do a C3 rotation like this, we notice that once we do a C3, we have the exact same arrangement that we had before. We have a hexagon on top, and then there's two pentagons to the side. Now, to, to verify this completely, we have to make sure that all the atoms were in equivalent positions after we did the C3, not just the ones that we see on the top. But it works out that they all do. So the C3 is a symmetry operation of this particular group. Um, along the same idea, if we can look carefully through the molecule, which might be a little difficult to do uh, with this camera angle, we'll, you can see that the arrangement of the three hexagons at the bottom is reversed in almost exactly the same way that we have the staggered conformation of ethane, which would lead to the point group D3D, or to the staggered arrangement of the front and back faces of the octahedron. So this tells us that this point group also has an S6 improper rotation.